Discovering the inner workings of your old-fashioned central heating system might leave you a bit cold. Well, we're in Italy, where innovative hydrogen boilers are the hottest prospect in town. Most people would agree that having a reliable boiler in your home is essential, particularly during winter. And the Giacomini Group says it's got the perfect solution. Our project on hydrogen started in the early 2000s within a wider project that was going on in northern Italy on uh, different uh, sustainable sources of uh, energy. The aim of the project was to develop a sustainable zero emission system for heat production. The project became operational in 2006 when its first hydrogen boiler was introduced to the public during the Winter Olympics in Turin. It's in itself a catalytic boiler which converts hydrogen into heat power. The hydrogen boiler is, uh, is based on uh, a catalytic burner for hydrogen. In uh, this burner, hydrogen is combined with uh, oxygen that is in the air in a very special uh, system based on a two-stage catalyst. And with this catalyst, it's possible to have the reaction at uh, 300 degrees. In standard boilers, you have carbon dioxide uh, on the exhaust, but also the nitrogen oxides. Our boiler is better because it's a real zero emission system. Despite these benefits, the boiler was not yet a practical solution, as it still depended on external hydrogen to fuel it. Hydrogen on the market plates is not uh, easily available, so we immediately understood that in order to make it a success on the market, the production and the storage of the hydrogen needed to feed the system would have to be produced in the same location in which the system was installed. To become fully self-sufficient, the boiler was put in an integrated system with the aim of fulfilling all household energy needs. The box takes electricity from solar panels on the roof and uses it to produce and store hydrogen, which is then used to fuel the boiler. The Solenco power box is uh, based on three main components. One is a reversible fuel cell. Electricity splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. And the same cell can later use the hydrogen to produce electricity and heat. It also has a catalytic boiler. This boiler, fueled with hydrogen, produces extra heat and of course we also have a water storage tank in order to provide heat for sanitary applications. The development of the system means that it's perfectly set up for independence from the grid. But heating and powering homes is not the only potential use for the hydrogen produced. In the very near future, in two years from now, we see that this box will also provide the fuel for your car. The power box not only offers a sustainable way to keep warm, but also an exciting glimpse into a world where you create your own energy from the comfort of your home. Albert Einstein once said, look deep into nature and then you'll understand everything better. We travelled to San Diego to see how a team of researchers are taking inspiration from plants to make humans greener too. Anyone wanting to produce hydrogen with no emissions and no external electricity could be said to have their head in the clouds. However, it might now be on the horizon. Nature finds its own way to collect its sunlight and also convert its sunlight and water, carbon dioxide into useful substance. So we want to learn from nature and want to mimic what nature does to convert its not so useful chemicals into useful chemicals, such as convert water into hydrogen as a fuel. This method is called artificial photosynthesis, and the semiconductor absorbs light much like a solar panel. We, what we do here is we use the semiconductor devices to directly capture solar light, and at simultaneously, at the same time, we can generate hydrogen. The major advantage of this process is we use the source of solar energy rather than use the source of fossil fuels to produce hydrogen. The conversion is very efficient when compared with other methods of storing solar energy for this purpose. The efficiency increases even more with the addition of a special catalyst. If there is a big mountain that we need to climb, 
in order to produce hydrogen. What Catalyst does is it lowers the height of the mountain so we can climb the mountain in a much easier way. So in that way, we can speed up the process. We also want to try to find a very cost-effective material rather than expensive materials so we can lower the cost of the device. Being constantly subjected to sunlight and salty water, the semiconductor needs protection so it can last longer and therefore be a more cost-effective solution. One of the things that we're trying to do to protect our semiconductors is using thin film metal oxide layers. These thin film metal oxide layers are deposited uniformly onto the surface of the semiconductor and they prevent the semiconductor from undergoing degradation and they increase the stability of the semiconductor in the system. This method of producing hydrogen is very water intensive, but there is research ongoing to overcome this obstacle too. We do not need to use drinkable and clean water. Seawater, which is readily available and conductive, actually is more suitable for our process. At the same time, what we do is also we are trying to collaborate with an environmental engineering group. We found out that not only we can use water to generate hydrogen, but at the same time we can clean the waste water. So in the future, what we are hoping is we can only use the sunlight and the waste water to generate clean water and hydrogen as a fuel. Clearly, the potential global benefits of this research extend far beyond producing hydrogen in a laboratory, and the team has big ambitions for the future. 50% of our world's population are still lived in decentralized community and developing countries, and they do not have e enough access of the water and energy infrastructures. So what I'm doing here, I hope, is I can help this large number of population to solve their water and energy issues in the future. Whether or not the team here achieve their goal, this sort of research points to a bright future, and one where, for hydrogen, the sky really is the limit. Yorgo, we've seen the really amazing work being done in California there. And it seems like for years, hydrogen has been the next big thing. What stood in its way in the past, and why are we now on the cusp of something great? Well, California is definitely one of the hotspots of hydrogen on a global scale. And the US was the place where this idea of a hydrogen economy took off. That was in the early 2000s when a book was titled Hydrogen Economy by Professor Jeremy Rifkin. And I think it caused a little bit of an overselling. So people thought, well, it's round the corner. But at that time, it was just a good idea. The maturity of the technology was not given. Today, the maturity is there, so technology has a high readiness to go to the market and we need um, this technology in order to integrate renewable uh, energy. So uh, we have new needs now and the technology is ready. What infrastructure do we need in place to take hydrogen to that next, that bigger scale? Well, when it comes to the production, uh, today, as we said, production is based on, on methane, on natural gas. We want green hydrogen, so we need electrolyzers. So the infrastructure of electrolyzers connected to the grids or connected to their final use is extremely important. Uh, and then, of course, once you have a lot of hydrogen, how to disseminate it? So the whole system of pipelines and also a better system of trailers is the next one. And the third element of infrastructure is refueling stations. So if you want to use hydrogen in mobility, you need to refill it and the stations need to be built. What is the future of hydrogen and how do we plan for it? Well, the future is, uh, it wants to see itself, hydrogen, as an enabler, as we said, uh, of a zero emission society, as the missing link to integrate different sectors like heating and cooling, transport and of course the renewable electricity production. So the enabler of sector integration is the most important aspect when we talk about hydrogen. And so if we really want to achieve a, a zero emission society or if we win, really want to achieve the two degree goal of the Paris Agreement, then we cannot do it without hydrogen. Yorgo, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Hydrogen might be the simplest element in the universe, but with ambitious decarbonisation targets over the next half century, it will play an intricate part in reducing emissions and making the planet a greener place. Absolutely, and from one exciting energy carrier to another, next time we move from hydrogen 
to electricity. If you're curious about where electricity can go from here as a sustainable energy leader, then get your questions into us at CNBC Energy on Twitter using the hashtags AskSE and Sustainable Energy. And we will, of course, put them to our electricity expert. Until then, keep thinking green. Goodbye. Goodbye. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.